taking on with us tonight. The Department of Employment and Labor is embarking on what is uh, called a mega blitz, inspecting, targeting hospitality uh, industry outfits uh, in the Western Cape. Uh, Minister Tulas Nmesi joined inspectors today as the department enforces labor legislation in the hospitality sector here. To talk to us about the broader implications of this, I'm joined by David Esau, uh, the department's provincial chief inspector, labor expert Terry Bell, as well as the chairperson of the Federated Hospitality Association of Southern Africa, Rosemary Anderson. Good evening to you and thank you very much uh, for your time uh, and uh, joining us uh, tonight. David, let's begin with you. Why now is this a reactive knee-jerk uh, response from government fearing that uh, the economic freedom fighters will go at it before you do? Absolutely not. Um, we, we, we had this plan already in our annual plan at the beginning of the financial year. But you must understand that this particular sector was locked down by, by COVID. So only now with the reopening of the COVID lockdown regulations, are we allowed to enter the sector? So it, it has been pre-planned all the time. And in fact, late last year, we already started with um, the hospitality sector. Yeah. So th there was no need to, need to reaction to anything at all. It's, 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 it's pre-COVID, David, if we are honest. This sentiment doesn't come with COVID. It came before COVID. Many people have been raising this issue. And if, if, if the department has been serious about this, why have there not been reports released around these numbers if you're continually uh, doing these inspections? Well, as, as, as promises and, and as the bronze, we, we, we report in Parliament on our performance on a quarterly basis. And if you go and look into our plans, you will find that it's in, in the plan, even of last year. I think that the difference now is that some other actions that caused us to be highlighted in this respect. But, but this is the normal work of a labor inspector. We've been doing blitzes all over. Um, even during COVID, we've done. We're one of the only uh, government organizations that were busy during COVID. And you recall that we had to close businesses during COVID because they did not apply or comply with the with the COVID regulations. So this has been our normal business. Yeah. There's nothing unusual about what we are doing today. It's 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 not only just the hospitality sector, which you will tell us why exactly you you're, you're focusing on the hospitality sector. The transport sector has also raised similar issues. Uh, and in in my time uh, in broadcasting, yeah. uh, I've been asking artists to say. Do these inspectors come? What do the inspectors look like? And we've been calling them out, saying, inspectors, come out. We want to see what do you do? Nothing coming out, David. Uh, we are really not convinced that these inspectors really do go and, and, and check these businesses. Except for now, of course, they have to go out and check for COVID-19 compliance. And they became really, really active. But do they go out to check things like uh, the uh, employment role of these companies and whether or not they fall within the uh, uh, gazetted legislation of the uh, percentages of, of, of how they should be employing? Well, that's our mandate. Um, and, and when we report on our numbers and our set targets, that's exactly what we do within the inspectorate. I happen to be the head in the Western Cape. And, and the, the over 200 labor inspectors that we have is active actually every single day. They are being identified by the cars they are driving. They are being identified by the, by the clothes they are wearing. So when people say that they are not seen, it doesn't make quite sense to me because I see the reports and I know where people are going. We have exact records of where people are going, what, tug, what areas we are covering within the, within the industries. And hospitality just happened to be one of the vulnerable sectors that we have. All right. Terry, let's bring you in. Have you seen these reports? Uh, are they as active as they say they are? They say it's part of normal, do normal way of doing business. Well, we're skating around the issue, the xenophobic issue, which is, let's face facts, that everything's some come to the fore now because of the EFF, the Patriotic Alliance, and this chap looks in Gauteng making a big ray raid about the fact of the ratio of South Africans to so-called foreigners, etc., which, of course, is a load of nonsense and does not apply with the Constitution. And David is completely correct. The Labour Inspectorate has a right to continue and should have continual blitzes on all workplaces, not just hospitality. This is just a political ploy at the moment, quite honestly. I don't think Labour Department's probably the inspectors are being used in that respect. 
But the point is that the inspectors go to inspect to find out if workers are being paid the rate for the job in safe conditions, whether the labor relations and laws are being applied in every workplace. There are far too few labor inspectors to actually manage, and this is something we've dealt with, and they yeah. may be aware that I've made a lot of fuss about that in the past. Yeah. But nonetheless, the point is that's what they should be doing. To now suddenly announce a mega blitz at the time when we're talking about what is really a thuggish, uh, illegal intervention by political groupings such as the EFF and Patriotic Alliance, etc., on the hospitality industry is quite honestly appalling. Now, the enforcement of the labor legislation, I suppose, becomes key here. If you read the statement carefully, it says, well, this is, uh, of course, to, to enforce the labor legislation, to, to test compliance on things like national minimum wage, uh, Occupational Health Safety Act, as you've already mentioned, Basic Conditions of Employment Act, and so on and so, on and so forth. Have we been strictly adhering uh, to, 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 to these particular measures uh, within employment We've never been able to, I beg your pardon for intervening, but we've never been able to because, quite honestly, the Labour Inspectorate has never been, has been underfunded and understaffed, quite honestly. They've not been able to pursue the very tasks they're supposed to do, which is to check how many, I've gone into so many places where you're supposed to have the Labour Relations Act on the wall, etc. Nothing applies. It's not there. The point is the inspectors do not have the resources, they've not been able to pursue it. I'm actually pleased that Labour Minister Tudus Nese has clarified that Labour Inspectors will be conducting a mega blitz, right, to check whether there will be decent wages and conditions for workers. But then he qualified that by, by saying, I oh, want also to check about the ratio of South... The ratio of South African workers to workers from anywhere else is totally irrelevant if they are legally employed. Workers are workers wherever they are, and they do not steal jobs. If any survey that anyone has ever conducted shows that workers who come in from elsewhere, if they have the qualifications and the expertise to do the jobs, do jobs which then in their turn create more employment. Yeah. Rosemary, the sentiments around uh, this particular matter. Firstly, do you feel that you're, you're being unfairly targeted as the hospitality sector in this particular blitz? Uh, Tabo, no, I don't. I actually agree with David. Um, I think this is actually a norm. Um, I also agree with Terry that there are not enough inspectors. But this is just uh, something that is done all the time. Obviously, you can only talk for our industry, but I'm sure other industries also experience labor um, inspectors going around. I think maybe just the timing is unfortunate with what, what was in the media last week, and some people were trying to get a lot of high profile with regards to it. But um, I, even if you're looking at the quota system that they're now referring to, I know um, in the media this morning, um, it was actually mentioned by um, the Labour Minister, they're now looking at a, a national uh, labour migration policy, um, which will refer to a quota in the uh, at, at some stage in the future. Um, Terry's perfectly right. At the moment, there isn't a quota system for the number of people that can be employed in hospitality who are South Africans and non-South Africans, but obviously looking in the future. But even Looking at the, the matter with regards to South Africans, non-South Africans working here, I see that there was draft legislation even in 2018. It was Employment Services Act uh, number 42014. It was in draft form where they were going to look at, um, at the matter of um, quotas and people employed. So it's not um, this, what is happening now is not a knee-jerk reaction. I think just the timing is unfortunate. Mm. But if I can put my bit in there, our problem in South Africa is unemployment. Our problem is not um, South Africans and non-South Africans. If tomorrow we decided that no, only, that only South Africans could work in South Africa, we would still have a massive unemployment problem. So our problem is unemployment. And what we need to do is facilitate a platform in South Africa where we can actually create jobs. And the wild and wonderful, exciting thing about our industry, hospitality and tourism, is that we, if we were actually given the right platform, we could literally create millions of extra jobs. 
So uh, we're really excited about what we actually can be doing. We actually engage with Minister Sisulu, who's actually been very involved in um, listening to our sector as to what we can do to create literally millions of additional jobs in South Africa. And that's where we're coming from. I, I, I paraphrase, and that's probably not exact, the exact words that, that, that were said, but there is this sentiment, uh, 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 Rosemary, that uh, it's your members who are pitting South Africans up against foreign nationals because the, your members take advantage of, of, of foreign nationals and they, they pay them uh, uh, very little compared to the uh, South African counterparts. And therefore, they swell their uh, uh, employment role with uh, foreign nationals. Uh, how, how do you react to that? Well, my reaction to that is that's actually where we need David and his counterparts in the other provinces to actually step in because we really want our members and our industry to be totally compliant. And in fact, we want it to be easier to be compliant than not to be compliant. And that's something that I would definitely put out to um, our uh, Labor and Employment Department and to other departments in South Africa. Make it easy to be compliant. Make it um, show us actually how to be compliant. And I'm very glad that David actually gave a little bit of warning to our sector. I wish he'd actually given more warning. I think he gave about a week. <laughs> but uh, maybe David, you maybe give us about a month, okay? <laughs> and the nice thing is, tell us what we should be doing. You know, exactly. restaurant owners and um, guest house people and tavern owners, our day job is to sell food and beverages. We're not good at admin. Naturally, we're not generally, that's not what we're great at, okay? So make it easy for us, actually help us. Tell us what we should be doing and really make it easy yeah. um, to be compliant. We actually want to be compliant. No one wants to go, no one wants to, go to sleep at night thinking, oh, I haven't done this, I'm not compliant, I'm gonna be in trouble there. Make it easy for us. Yeah. So in future, David, please, a month, okay? And um, <laughs> just show us how to be compliant. <laughs> actually give us what we should be doing. If I can also just say, um, just to ask for a little bit of forgiveness during this time, right. we have just come out of a devastating time a lot of us okay. didn't even know if we would be in business anymore. Right. So Terry, Terry I, 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 really I see your hand. Terry, I, I, see, I see your hand. We're going to take a break uh, and we're going to come back. I want David to talk a little bit more about uh, what the minister is calling illegal recruitment practices in South Africa. He's raising concerns around this issue. He says, including the hiring of immigrant foreigners who are not in the country lawfully. How right is that situation when we continue? Back with you tonight on In Focus, David Essel and Terry Bell, as well as Roseberry Anderson in conversation with us. Of course, so we are looking at the proposed uh, new dispensation uh, that uh, deals with uh, the uh, 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 migration policy or employment, a new labor, uh, let me call it properly, new national labor migration policy that is being proposed. Uh, by the Minister of Labour. Terry, let's, let, let's come back to, 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 to this issue of uh, uh, concern around the, the inspection, right, uh, that uh, the, the, there are uh, illegal recruitment practices in South Africa that, that need to be inspected. Do uh, you think this is, there's any truth and veracity to that? They need to not only be inspected, but prosecuted. And the point is that this has been going on for years. And it's not the fault of the workers. It's the fault of the employers in this case. And in fact, the fault of government for not actually adequately subsidizing and supporting the Labor Department and the Labor Inspectors to ensure that these regulations and these laws in the Basic Conditions of Employment Act, the Labor Relations Act, are followed to the T. They should be done. They're not done. But it's not the workers who should be pinpointed. What we now have with this xenophobic nonsense that's emerging is a form of scapegoating, of saying, well, we don't want to be blamed because we're politicians. Let's find someone else. So let's blame the Zimbabweans or let's blame the Somalis or let's blame foreign traders, etc. This is dangerous fascist nonsense and we should be aware of that yeah. and it's very very we saw it happen in 2000 what happened in 2008 well, i don't want yeah. to see that happen again yeah. thank you yeah. very much. terry what what in your view is distorting the labor market access in the country uh, i mean uh, uh, is, is it unrealistic for south africans to expect that uh, the uh, job market access in the country should be should at least prioritize local citizens no, because it's a form of what you would call cater development, which we've suffered from for a long, long time in, in this country. 
we have had people who've been appointed into jobs and positions, not because they were qualified or in any sense had any ability to do the jobs, but only because they were loyal to a particular faction or party or whatever. This is dangerous. No, we should agree that any worker who is qualified for and can do the job should be given the job because the person having that job helps to encourage the enterprise to succeed and that succeed, successful enterprise in its turn then requires cleaners, it requires supplies, etc. It encourages other work from outside. The workers who are employed there, whether they, wherever they come from, whether they're South Africans or wherever they come from, actually earn wages, which then go back into the communities and are then spent in the communities, which again encourage more work. No study anywhere has ever shown that migrant workers deplete jobs. They create jobs. They are part of the job creation process. It's a question of giving the people who qualify for the job the job to do it. Get the right people for the right job, and that's it. David, uh, the, uh, the records that you have and that you've collected in a while, what do they show, especially around the distortion of the labor market access? Uh, do you find, let's look at the hospitality sector in particular, that they, the sector is adhering to the existing minimum standards? And, and what are those standards? Well, the, 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 what we have found over the last two days, um, I mean, we, we came out in, to yesterday alone, at about a 42% compliance, which, which, which is about the, the, the minimum number that we are looking at, um, especially what Rosemary earlier said is in this particular sector, that, that employers, they just came back after this lockdown. They are trying to set up their, their systems again. Prior to this, I think this particular sector was doing well. And obviously now they felt the pins, and so they need to recover. And what we have what we have seen is the the type of, of contraventions are not as critical as you would, would have expected them to be. Um, for example, the, the issue of not paying the national minimum wage. We don't have big problems with those kind of things. What we seem to have a problem with is that because the limited workforce and the tourism sector is open, what has happened is that there's a high influx of people coming into the hospitality sector, but but the workforce is not big enough because the employer is still recovering in terms of the numbers. And I think once we strike those particular balances, we will find that this particular sector will, com will comply. Um, obviously, the, 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 the test fund and the UIF becomes very important within the hospitality sector because we are living in a new world. This is a new world. And therefore, it could happen again. And therefore, we need to be careful that we comply with the laws in the event of calling on government to help again that we are in a position to help because those particular contributions has come in. Yeah. You're, you're, you're hearing the minister saying, no, we are looking at some amendments. For example, the first one will have to deal with quotas, right? So uh, put a maximum number of uh, 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 people that can be introduced uh, via a work visa who are from the foreign national segment, but also, on the other hand, saying getting rid of undesirables uh, in, in the sector. Is this necessary? Well, that's a political argument. Um, you, you can't ask that to the administrator. Um, I, I, we, we but, 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 I, I'm, the, I'm asking the, you as, as, for the, as, as an administrator, when you look at your reports and you look at the numbers, are we having a problem of undesirables? Uh, and are we having a problem of uh, 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 quotas uh, that, that, what, that would need to be implemented to lean towards the, the, the local citizens, particularly in agriculture, in hospitality, tourism, uh, and uh, in, in construction, to name just a few? I, 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 I like the point that Terry made um, earlier on, that if you are legally in the country, clearly you also have the same rights as any other person in the country. So to me, it's about entering the country and how you enter this country. If you have all the legal documents, isn't it discriminatory then to say that you shouldn't get a job in, in the country? Um, and secondly, isn't it the employer who decides who gets the job? It is not, it's not, it's not government that says you're going to get the job. It's the employer who decides who gets the job. Because it's a recruitment process that goes out there. And 
And I think in the recruitment process, I always believe the best person gets the job and you don't look at, at race, color, or gender, or anything else. Yeah. And therefore, I don't, I, the, the, to me, it's not about the quota system. To me, it's about um, if you're legally in the country, you have the same rights as a South African, yeah. whether you're South African or not South African. Uh, Rosemary, uh, your members, will you be challenging a, 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 an employment and labor migration policy that introduces quotas that says, well, there needs to be a maximum number of people that you employ in your establishment uh, who are foreign nationals uh, working with visas in the country? Well, we'll have to see what comes out. I know it's going to be presented at NEDLAC, where we've also got some formal representation to find out the details. At the moment, there's no details at all. But what I would say is you've got to look at internationally. Where have quota systems worked to bacteria up? Um, and also, David, where, where have these things worked well? Where have they actually benefited an economy? Where have they actually helped build goodwill between people? Um, the yeah. UK at the moment is, for all intents and purposes, um, uh, uh, Brexit was a quota system. And now they're really struggling. They actually now have got massive problems with regards to a number of sectors. They haven't got people even to pick the, the produce that they actually grow from the, from the fruits and the berries. So um, you really, we want to really learn from what other countries have failed at. Which countries have benefited from that and which countries haven't benefited? Let's learn from what other people have mistakes other people have made. Yeah. Terry, there yeah. is a, yeah. a, a talk around, for example, a critical skills list. And whenever they criticize the hospitality sector in particular is to say, well, I mean, being a waiter in a restaurant is not a critical skill. So why would that uh, uh, fall under those critical skills lists? So if foreign nationals comes here into South Africa, we should be looking to hire people with critical skills that we do not have uh, in the country.